got myself into a bit of a situation here. I am stuck in the mud and I can't get out. The weight of this van is causing a problem, especially that it's two wheel drive. As soon as one wheel stops spinning, I've basically only got a one wheel drive. So this video is going to be about all the things we love and hate about this van. But before I get started, I gotta get myself unstuck. So, hmm. Ideally in situations like this, you would use recovery tracks to get yourself unstuck. I don't have any, it's definitely something I'm gonna look into in the future, so I just had to use what I had at the time. And as you can see, this wasn't working very well. This grass was subject to some heavy rain recently, so it was very soft. And even with our newly upgraded all-terrain tires, I still couldn't get myself unstuck. So I've been trying to get myself unbogged now for the last three hours and I'm just digging myself a bigger hole here. So I've gone and found someone who's got a tractor who's going to try and pull me out and then I'll get on with the video. So once the tractor pulled me out and got me onto some more solid grass, I was fine. And he pulled me out really easy. It was just that tiny little patch of grass that I couldn't get out of. It's not that it's too heavy that pisses me off the most. It's actually that the rear differential is open diff. It doesn't have a diff locker and it's obviously not four wheel drive. So we can get stuck in situations and Australia is a very big country with a lot of off road. I'm gonna start looking into the possibility of getting an air locker for the rear diff to give that rear diff much more traction. In an open differential like ours, if one wheel loses traction, all the power will go to that one wheel. An air locker uses compressed air to mechanically lock the axles so that both wheels will spin at the same speed regardless if traction is lost. This would help immensely in this situation as it would give me twice as much traction as I'm getting right now and I'm sure it would be able to get me out. That's my pain point, off to the next one. One of my favorite features that I absolutely love in this van is the windows we put in, the pop-out windows. They basically solve four problems in one that you will have with a van. First of all, ventilation is so important. You need great ventilation when you're in a van. You either get really hot and you need to ventilate things. These windows are great because you can open them up in the rain. The other problem they solve is they have a built-in fly screen, especially in summer in Australia, you have lots of mosquitoes, flies, midges. You wanna be having your windows open at night and all the moths and bugs can't come in. And then the other thing they really excel in is these blackout blinds and it is one built-in feature. This is Reflectex on the other side, so it radiates the heat away and it is so easy. It's all built in one. The window is actually double glazed as well for that extra insulation and they close super simple. I can't recommend these enough. I think they're called Eurovision windows. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really recommend them because they are so functional and easy to use. The deck. Do I love it or do I hate it? Well, hate's a strong word, but it does annoy me a little bit in the fact that we don't use it as much as we like. It is cool but it does take up quite a little bit of space behind us. It does, as you can see, takes up about 120 millimeters of the floor space, which could be used for other things like bigger boxes. And also we wanted to install a second freezer in the back here, but I just can't find one that fits nice and neatly that I'd be able to install a pullout drawer with this deck in place. If I was to build this van again, I would probably skip this thing. It does add a little bit of extra weight to the rear too, and we don't utilize it as much as we would like to. When it is sunny, we go up onto the rooftop deck, and the amount of times we use it probably once a month doesn't really warrant the extra space and weight that this thing has added. The next thing I love about this van is the physical size of it. It is big enough for me to stand up in. I'm six foot three. And as you can see, I've still got quite a little bit of head space. The length of the van is perfect because it is able to be driven around town, 
parked in normal car spots. It's not super long and it's also long enough that we can live very comfortably. So the Ford Transit is also super wide, which is what drew us to this van. I've utilized the actual framing of the van and made these little cutouts without putting flares on the actual van itself and having to cut the paneling out. From one end of the bed to the other is six foot three or 193 centimeters. It is perfect for us so we can have a fixed bed and have so much more cabin space, which is really what we wanted because we can have a fixed kitchen, a fixed dining area and a fixed bed, all within a van that is still drivable through the city and you can park in spots. So that's probably one of my favorite things about this van is the physical size of it. So something that annoys me quite a lot on this build is this drawer and the way everything is stacked and stored in here, it really just irks me. So this is our big drawer. We've got our pots and pans, but everything is kind of just thrown in here. Pots are underneath the frying pan. So to get to anything, you kind of got to take everything out. The lids are on the door at least. It's a drawer that holds a lot of stuff, but doesn't hold it very well. I don't know what the solution is in a van this size because you can't really have like a separate pots and pans drawer. You have to incorporate things and use it multi-purpose to save space. So that really pisses me off. I don't know if there's a better solution out there. Comment below if there is. I'd love to know about it so I can fix this thing that really pisses me off. So right above one of the things that pisses me off the most is one of the things I love the most and that is our oven and our stove. The oven in a van is a massive game changer. It really just opens up a whole new world of things you can cook. You're not limited to just stove cooking in a pot or a frying pan. You can bake things. I pay cakes, roasts, enchiladas, bread, cookies, you name it, we've made it in here. And I'm actually convinced the oven uses less gas than the stove. It's got a little burner at the bottom and the flame does seem smaller than the ones you have on the stove top. So I reckon you're saving gas as well by cooking in the oven. And the cleanup is always just way easier because you only have generally one thing to clean up instead of having to scrub pots and pans. I love it. I don't know how we would live in a van again without an oven. I'm gonna try not to. So that is one of my favorite things I love about this van. So under one of our dining room seats is where all the electronics are stored, like the battery, the chargers, the fuse box, and all the cutoff switches. My original thinking was I'll put it in an easy to access location in case I needed to shut off anything for maintenance or if there was an emergency. The problem with that is if you've done your system correctly, you don't really ever need to do any maintenance. And if your fuses are all set up correctly, nothing's gonna go wrong that you need to have a really close cutoff switch to turn everything off. So instead of putting it here, I would next time put it in the garage on the wall next to where the inverter is and save a heap of space. And then I would have some usable space in the living room because at the moment we don't really put anything in here and it is definitely a prime location for storage in your living room. So that's definitely food for thought and I would probably change that next time around. Are you thinking about building building a van or in the middle of your build process, watching this video and thinking, wow, some of this van building stuff can be quite tricky. I don't know if I've got the skills and know-how to actually pull it off. Well, good thing for you is I'm here to help. I know for a fact that videos on YouTube can make things look a lot easier than they actually are. Electrical systems, diagrams, solar arrays, all that kind of stuff can be quite overwhelming for someone who hasn't looked at it before. With my know-how and vast experience with camper van build and my background in engineering, I'm here to help anyone with their van building process no matter what country you're in stage you're at or what type of van build you are aiming for if consulting doesn't seem right for you and you want access to our high detail 3d models of all our builds our electrical diagrams plumbing diagrams and the complete parts breakdown and cost list we use you can access them from our website saltyvanventures.com Everything is there to help you out. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will be sure to get back to you. All right, let's continue on. So the last thing I absolutely love about this van and something I will never build a van without is our instant gas hot water system and our hot water shower. So this is our shower setup. It basically just hangs on the back of the door. 
and it is instant hot water. So the pump will run through the gas hot water heater and then come straight out of here. You set the temperature you want on the controller inside the van so you don't have to adjust this. It'll just come out at a perfect 40 degrees or whatever you set it at. It only takes around about 20 seconds for hot water to start coming out of here and it is super efficient. The hot water heater is a Durard instant hot water heater. We've had no problems with it and it just worked flawlessly. We both use the shower much, much more than what you would expect. I pretty much have a hot shower every single day where you're in the van, summer or winter. It is amazing. It's easy to find privacy. You just reverse the van up to a wall or bushes, close both doors, and you have instant privacy. You don't even need to run a shower screen. It's so simple. It just packs away super quick and easy and neat into this little cutty. I can't recommend it enough. I absolutely just love it. Okay, that is everything we love and hate about this van. As you can probably tell, the loves do outweigh the hates. So we really do love this van. You will never get a perfect van, but for us, this thing is pretty close. There are a couple of niggles that we don't like. If you would like to support us, remember to like this video it'll really help the channel out subscribe if you like these videos and if you want to see what we're up to on a daily remember to follow us on instagram at salty underscore van ventures but until next time i'll see you then